मॉर्निंग एवरी वन माई सर देवान शी मेहता फ्रॉम अरबी के हनुमान हाई स्कूल एज ए पार्ट ऑफ वर्चुअल फेयर आई हैव मेक वर्किंग मॉडल ऑफ एच सी एफ एंड एल सी एम सो नाव आई विल एक्सप्लेन द एल सी एम बाई यूजिंग द मैबल्स सो इट इज इट मीन लिस्ट कॉमन मल्टीपल सो वी विल टेक रेंडम नंबर लाइक टू थ्री एंड फोर सो टू वन जा टू 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 जा फोर टू थ्री जा सिक्स टू फोर जा एट टू वन जा टू 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 जा फोर टू थ्री जा सिक्स टू फोर जा एट टू फाइव जा टेन टू सिक्स जा ट्वेल्व टू सेवन जा फोर्टीन टू एट जा सिक्सटीन टू नाइन जा एटीन टू टेन जा ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी फोर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी सिक्स एंड ट्वेंटी एट एंड थर्टी ना वे विल फाइंड दी फैक्टर्स मल्टीपल्स ऑफ थ्री थ्री वन जा थ्री थ्री टू जा सिक्स थ्री थ्री जा नाइन थ्री फोर जा ट्वेल्व थ्री फाइव जा फिफ्टीन थ्री सिक्स जा एटीन थ्री सेवन जा ट्वेंटी वन थ्री एट जा ट्वेंटी फोर थ्री एट जा ट्वेंटी फोर थ्री नाइन जा ट्वेंटी सेवन थ्री टेन जा थर्टी नाम इज विल फाइंड द फैक्ट मल्टीपल्स ऑफ फोर फोर वन जा फोर फोर टू जा एट फोर थ्री जा ट्वेल्व फोर फोर जा सिक्सटीन फोर फाइव जा ट्वेंटी फोर सिक्स जा ट्वेंटी फोर फोर सेवन जा ट्वेंटी एट ना वी विल सी द कॉमन मल्टीपल्स कॉमन मल्टीपल्स इज ट्वेल्व एंड ट्वेंटी फोर सो दो वी विल फाइंड so this is uh, we have to find the list common multiple so list common multiple is 12 now i will explain about hcs so for it we will take random number 4 and 6 so the we will find the factor of 4 four ones are 4 and 4 2 twos are 4 now we will find the fa factor of 6 six. six ones are 6 And uh, six uh, two threes are six. So the common factor is one and two. But we have to find the highest common factor. So two is the highest common factor. So uh, I hope you understand the the concept of HCF and LCM. Thank you. Hello everyone. I'm Shicha Mehta, studying class seven from Hanuman High School. Today, as a part of the virtual fair, my topic is axial angle property of triangle. As we all know, triangle is the only polygon having three sides and three angles. Today, through this model, I'll demonstrate to you about the axial angle property of the triangle, in which you will learn that when we add two interior opposite angles of a triangle, we get an axial angle. So let's begin. For example, here this angle is 60 degree, and this angle is also 60 degree. So when we add two interior opposite angles, which are 60 plus 60 is equal to 120, which is exterior angle over here. Now, if we move this over here, if we make this angle 130 degree, and if we move this over here as 70 degree, so the two interior angle, which are 60 plus 70, is equal to 130 degree. And now, if we move this angle to 140 degree. And move this to 80 degree, so 60 degree plus 80 degree is equal to 140 degree. So hence, it is proved that when we add two interior opposite angles of a triangle, we get an exterior angle. I hope you understood this concept by this working model. Thank you. Hey friends, I am really upset today as I forgot how to convert fractions to decimals. It's okay, we will make you understand. Let us perform a physical working model for it. Hey friends, we are the students of class seventh A, and today we will explain the concept of converting fraction into decimal. Let me introduce all of us. I am Gayatri. He is Thru. He is Arsh, and she is Gunjan. As we all got introduced, let us come to the topic. Here, to find the numerator, we will spin the wheel. We got eighteen as numerator, and now we will spin the wheel for finding the denominator. To find decimals, we have to divide. So to divide, we have the fraction as eight eighty eight upon one thousand. So here is a very simple trick to find out the decimal of any fraction. We need to see the zeros in the denominator. Denominator. So here are three zeros, and the so after the decimal point, the zeros, the digits will come will be three. 
but as we can see in the, our numerator only there are two digits so we we can also write it as 088 so the so the de the decimal form would be 0 decimal point 0 8 the third digit would be 8 so as we can see our decimal number decimal number form 0 0.088 so we hope you understood the concept of converting fractions to decimals. Thank, Thank you. Hello everyone, Prasanna and Dilsha from class 9 are going to show you the project that we have created for the virtual science fair. The topic of our project is understanding polygons. So what do we mean by polygons? A polygon is a 2D closed figure uh, with two or more sides. So how can we create polygons? Let us see in this uh, proje uh, project. Here, we will try with the triangle, look. Now we will find its angle by doing, by doing like this, look. We are here having the angle 80 degree and here we are having the angle of 90 degree and here we can have the angle of 30 degree. So this is one way of finding the angles. A, sta a property of a triangle states that the sum of all three angles of a triangle should be 180 degree. In this case, we have an isosceles triangle. Therefore, the base angles of this triangle measure 180 degrees each. Therefore, 80 degree plus 80 degree is 160 degree and the top angle is 20 degrees. Therefore, it becomes 180 degree. Now, let's move forward and see some other angles. So, first of all, we will see a uh, square. We are, we are making it. Here, we can see a square, a quadrilater. Now, we will move to a pentagon. See, we can have a pentagon here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi everyone, myself Krishna Varaki and my friend Jia Pitwa from grade 7b. Today we are going to explain about triangle and its types. What is a triangle? A triangle is a three-sided polygon or a simple closed curve made of three line segments. There are three types of triangle based on their sides. First, equilateral triangle. It has all the three sides of same length. As you can see, these three sides are of 15 cm. Second, isosceles triangle. It has two sides of same length and one is of different length. As you can see, it is of 10 cm and these both are of 15 cm. Third, scalene triangle. It has all the three sides of different length. As you can see, this is of 8 cm, this is of 15 cm and this is of 10 cm. Now I call upon Jia for explanation of triangle based on their angles. There are three types of triangle based on angle. First, right angle triangle. In right angle triangle, one angle is right angle. See, it is right angle. Here also. Second, acute angle triangle. In acute angle triangle, all angles are acute, such as equilateral triangle. It has all angles of 60 degree. We can see here, this is the 60 degree. Third, obtuse angle triangle. In this triangle, obtuse angle is 1. Yes, our intention was to make you understand about the triangle and its types. We hope you have understood the concepts of a types of triangle. Thank you and have a nice day. So hello everyone, my name is Prince Chowda from Standard 6A. Today I will explain you about basic fraction. So you can consider it is a pizza which is divided into 8 equal parts. This is one part of pizza. In fraction we, we have to consider is 1 upon 8. This is second part of pizza, which is considered consider as 2 upon 8. 
and this is half part of pizza which is considered as four opponent. Now my friend will explain you about types of fraction. Hello friends, my name is Ansh Kotecha from grade 6A. Today I am going to explain you about the types of fractions. We will start from the proper fractions. Proper fractions are the fractions in which the denominator is greater than the numerator. For example, 6 is the numerator and the 1 is denominator. 4. 4 it our fraction is 4 by 6. Now I will explain you about the improper fractions. In the improper fractions, the uh, denominator is smaller than the numerator. Seven. Our fraction is 7 by 2 in the improper fractions. Now my friend Miraj will explain you. Hi, hello, myself Mira. Today I will explain you about like fraction. In like fraction, there are three to four fraction, and the denominator of each fraction is same, and the numerator of fraction is is different. For uh, for example, for uh, for example, seven is denominator in all the fraction, and So it is uh, seven, uh, 3 by 4. Second is 6 by, uh, six by 7. And third is uh, 8 by 7. So uh, so we hope that you uh, concept of fraction is clear. Thank you. Hello friends. I am Muskan Jurani and my friend Eva Doshi from class 6A. Today we are going to explain about our working model of SS. Types of pollution. Do you know what is pollution? Pollution is the action of making air, water, soil dirty and dangerous. There are four types of pollution. Air pollution, noise pollution, water pollution and land pollution. First, I am going to explain about the air pollution. The chimneys and the factories throw out some harmful gases that affect the environment. The vehicles do the same thing and this is how the air pollution takes place. Next is the water pollution. When the waste from the... When we throw garbage in the water or wash clothes in the water areas, the water gets polluted. This is how water pollution takes place. Third is the noise pollution. The no loud noises from the DJs and from the vehicles affect the environment. And that is how the noise pollution takes place. Last type of pollution is land pollution. When we throw garbage and wrappers in the road, so it does never mixes in the soil, so so the soil becomes dirty. See this, this is how land pollution takes place. Now let us have a look on how to reduce the pollution. We should stop using polythene bags instead. We should use paper bags. Secondly, we should follow the three R's: reuse. Reduce and recycle. We should throw garbage in the dustbin, not in the water or on the land. Third, uh, in nearby distances, we should go walking. And this is how we could save our mother earth from getting polluted. This is a message from our side. Stop pollution is the best solution. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello everyone, my name is Tuanisi Maria. And my self is Shitadato from HP. Today we will explain about Pythagoras theorem. Pythagoras theorem is an important topic in man's researchment. Relation between two sides of right angle triangle. Sometimes it is also called Pythagorean theorem. Pythagoras theorem is basically used to find the length of an unknown side and right, ang right angle triangle. By this, we can derive base, perpendicular base, and hypotenuse base. It, it is a triangle with one of its angles has a right angle that is 90 degrees. The side that Opposite to 90 degree is known as hypotenuse. The two other sides that are adjacent to the right angle triangle are called legs of the triangle. Now I will show our Pythagoras theorem what they model. A square B square is equal to C square. A square plus B square is equal to C square. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello friends, my name is Dhwani Padia. I am a student of class 9. 
This is a miniature model showing an agriculture field close to a dam. The farmer used to cultivate crops and water it manually, but it was too hard to do so. So he thought to use an irrigation method. He picked up a drip irrigation as it reduces the need of water. Drip irrigation is a process in which water from a uh, water from a tank reaches the crops through pipes. Uh, the pipes have small holes holes from which water uh, falls on the plant drop by drop. Here the farmer used water from the dam. Uh, he kept a pump in the dam which uh, sucks water from the dam and transfer it to the tank. Then the water from the tank goes to the uh, pipes and uh, the water falls on the crops. This is how drip irrigation works. Hello my dear friends and respected teachers. I am Tisha Sangbin from grade 6a. Today me and my friends are going to explain about types of angles. So let's begin it by the working model. So I will show the acute angle. It is 50 degrees. And obtuse angle, it is 130 degree or any angle from 90 degree to 180 degree. For example, it is 130 degree. Now my friends, now we will explain about right angle. Hello my dear friends, I am Sana and today I am going to explain you about right angle. So, uh, right angle is nothing but exactly 90 degree. If we turn this into the 90 degree, it becomes uh, exact 90 degree. So, uh, this is my 0 degree and this is my 90 degree. So, when I do this, it forms a L shape. So, it means a right angle. So, now my friend Shreya Bambhanya will explain you about straight angle. Good morning friends, myself, myself Shreya. Today I will explain about straight angle. Straight angle is two right angle. So, it will come at... 180 degree. So, it is half portion of this. Now my friend Shreya, ba Shreya Mehta will explain about angle. Hello sirs and teachers. Today I will explain about a complete angle. Complete uh, angle is nothing but uh, it is uh, 360 degree. This is complete angle, full. Thank you. Hello my dear friends and teachers. Today I will explain about two types of angles. Reflex angle, 250 degree. One, 210 degree to 330, we can do any reflex angle. Thank you. Hello everyone. I am Krisha Khanwani, the student of Hanuman IBK. Going to introduce about my SS project ATM machine. ATM machine was invented by the John Barron. John Barron was one of the Indian born British. He born in 23rd June 1925. He died in 15th of May 2010 in the United Kingdom. ATM are convenient to, ATM are convenient for the consumers to perform the quick self-service transactions such as deposits, cash withdrawals, bill payments and transfer between the accounts. Now let me tell you some of the advantages of the ATM machine. By using an ATM machine, a customer can link with the, any account by their car. ATM machine provides the 24 hour service. So, this is my ATM machine card. Here is my bank name, IDFC Bank. Here is the code of the ATM machine. So, now I will show you how it is working. So, if we will put the card in this, so the coins will be getting out. So, this is the, my ATM machine. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Myself, Kurishi Alia and my friends Vani Manir and Yuvraj Thakkar from grade 8b and our topic is economic of Indian sector. In our economy, there are three main sectors. First is primary, second is secondary and the third is tertiary sector. 
Now, I would like you guys to speak about primary sector. Primary sector. Activities of primary sector are related to extracting or agriculture. Now, let's see the 3D model of primary sector which I have made. This is farming. From farming, we can get we can get many of the products like jute, cotton by growing it. This is coal mines. From extracting, we can get precious stones, metals, etc. This is dairy farm or animal husbandry. From this, we can get egg, meat, milk, etc. This is forestry. From forest products, we can get forest products, forest product from it, like glue, rubber, gum, paper, etc. Now I call upon Vani for explaining secondary sector. Secondary sector. Secondary sector is an economical sector which describes to related describes the role of manufacturing. It encompasses industries to make a finished useful product for sale to domestic businesses or consumers and for exports. Manufacturing is an important activity used for economic growth and development. It in this sector mainly uh, mainly it is dependent on primary sector for raw materials to make the final product. Example cotton industries. Cotton comes as a raw material in factories and after the process it comes out as pure cotton as cotton bales as a finished product. Now I call upon Alia Qureshi to explain this tertiary sector. Tertiary sector. Tertiary sector is a technical name of the service sector which includes a business including a financing institution, schools, hospitals, etc. Our tertiary sector can be subdivided broadly into two profit and non-profit segments. Example of the tertiary sectors are all the services we receive from the financial institutions such as bank, investment brokers and hospitals. All these are part of the tertiary sectors. Thanks and have a nice day. Hello everyone. I am Harsh Ruparel. I am Tirth. We are from 9th grade and we are showing the first identity a plus b square. So let's suppose this is a and this is b. A plus b square is equals to a square plus 2 into a into b plus 2 b square. Total identity is a plus b square is equal to a square plus 2 a b plus b square. Thank you. Hello everyone, this is Krisha, Krish and Viraj. As you can see that we have present the working model on square and square root. As you keep rolling it, you will be seeing the numbers and their square root. For example, square root of 1 is 1, square root of 2 is 4, square root of 3 is 9, square root of 4 is 16, square root of 5 is 25, square root of 6 is 36, square root of 7 is 49, square root of 8 is 64, square root of 9 is 81, square root of 10 is 100, Square root of 11 is 121, square root of 12 is 144, square root of 13 is 169, square root of 14 is 196, square root of 15 is 225. Now, we can remember the square easily from numbers 1 to 25, but considering a fact that most of us are students and we can't remember the squares of larger digits, so I am having an interesting trick for it. So, let us take an example, 32 square. So, first of all, we'll subtract 25 from 32, which will give us 7. And then, we'll subtract 5, 32 from 50, which will give us 18. Now, 18 square is 324. So, we will add this 3 to 7. 3 plus 7 gives us 10. And the final answer 32 square is 1024. Thank you. Good morning everyone. We are from RBK Hanuman High School, Mahua Standard 7. My name is Zehra Kapasi. And my name is Smita Kubari. And my name is Zaki Ali Vartaji. Today we are explaining about... Uh, today we are going to explain about the criteria for congruence of triangles. There are five criteria. RHS... Uh, uh, RHS, SAS, ASA, uh, AAS, and uh, uh, SSS. So let's start with first criteria, SSS. In these two corresponding sides, to these two sides and these two sides are equal. So hence we can say it, uh, this triangle is controlled by the help of SSS rule. And second criteria is 
are they true right hypotenuse side these two hypotenuse this nine angle ninth angle and these two corresponding sides are equal hence we can say these triangles are formed by the help of rhs criteria third sas side angle side as we can see there are two side and one angle in two corresponding side and one angle included between them hence we can say by using sas criteria these two triangles are congruent aas criteria angle side, angle angle side there are two corresponding side one corresponding side and two angle by hence by using aas criteria we can say these two triangles are congruent now as criteria in as criteria uh, you can you can see that there are uh, two angles uh, there are two corresponding angles and one uh, included side uh, hence we can use as criteria to make both the triangles equivalent and uh, equivalent congruent thank, thank you, you thank you hello everyone we students of grade 8 are here to show you some tricks of hydraulic pressure i am tanay i am vansh I am Anush. Now we are trying to show you some small model of hydraulic lift based on hydraulic pressure. These all are based on the Pascal law. For this, in first I will explain you about pressure. Pressure is the unit force applied at the right angle surface to the, of an object per unit area. Hydraulic lift. Hydraulic lift is a device for moving objects using pressure created by liquid in a piston, which pulls out the piston upward hydraulic clip we are using here three planks wooden planks and two pairs of syringe the syringe consists of water which will create pressure of water and take this syringe and make this up and down thank you thank you hello everyone my name is maliki vagila i am the student of standard 7th elementary high school mawa I have made a project of seismograph. It is related to the social science. This seismograph is also known as the earthquake detector. So let's start. We, as we know that there are many earthquakes occurring on daily basis. So this is a machine which helps to detect how the earthquake has affected any area or place. This seismograph is attached with a pendulum. <laughs> marker pen and the marker pen detects the pitch of the earthquake on the sheet of paper or a graph of paper so let's see it practically suppose this is an earthquake As you can see that it is recording the pitch of the earthquake on the sheet of paper. Thank you and have a nice day. Hello everyone. My name is Kevin. This is from class 7B. Presents you the layers of atmosphere. Our atmosphere is divided into five layers starting from the surface, the sun, the atmosphere, the troposphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, and exosphere. So let's learn about troposphere. Troposphere is the most important layer of atmosphere. It extends up to the height of 13 km. The air we breathe exists here. Almost all the weather phenomena occurs in this layer. Moving on to the stratosphere, about troposphere lies the stratosphere. It extends up to the height of 50 km. In this layer, almost no clouds are present. Thus, the conditions are very favorable for flying the aeroplanes. Also, in this layer, a layer of ozone gas is present, which helps in protecting us from the harmful sun rays. Moving on to the mesosphere. In mesosphere, meteorites burning up in the space enter the layer. Now we come to the thermosphere. In thermosphere, the temperature rises very rapidly due to the increasing height. In this layer, also helps in radio transmission. And now we want to the exosphere. Exosphere is the uppermost layer of atmosphere. It this layer very thin air flows. The gases such as helium, hydrogen are very thin and light in weight, so they float in this layer. Okay, so these are the layers of atmosphere. I hope I hope you got the idea about it. Th thank you for listening me very carefully. Thank you. 
Hello friends, my name is Satan and my friend's name is Rudra Raju. Uh, we have made a project on social science which is renewable source of energy. A renewable source of energy can be used rapidly because these resources are unlimited in the nature. For example, wind energy, solar energy. Uh, the, the example of a uh, renewable source of energy is solar energy. Uh, the sunlight from the sun is captured by uh, solar plates which convert it into electricity. And uh, uh, as we all know that uh, sunlight uh, is everywhere and in unlimited amount, so we can use it without any problem. I am Namdev and he is Rohit. We have made an SS project on non-renewable source of energy. Non-renewable source of energy are sources which produce electricity and are limited and finite in nature. These are being made naturally, for example, coal, oil energy, nuclear energy and etc. Let's take an example of coal, a non-renewable source. Coal is source of energy but finite in nature. So we need to carefully use the non-renewable source of energy like coal, which is easily available in nature but can be finished soon. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello friends, my name is Swayri. Today I have made a project on social science. So this is my model parliament. Uh, in India, the legislature at the central level is called parliament. It consists of two houses. The lower house is called the Lok Sabha and House of People. The upper house is called the Rajya Sabha and Council of Ministers. The maximum strength of Lok Sabha is 552. Out of these, 530 members are elected from union territories. The function of parliament is make up of Council of Ministers and Prime, including Prime Ministers. So, this is a model of Parliament and this is a beautiful model of Parliament. Thank you. I am Pandi and myself Radhava. Here we have prepared the model of different types of forest. But first, do you know what is forest? Forest is an area dominated with trees. Here we have presented six different types of forest, which are tropical evergreen forest, temperate evergreen forest, temperate deciduous forest, Coniferous forest, tropical grassland, and desert vegetation. So now let us move on to temperate deciduous forest. As you go in higher latitudes, we find more temperate deciduous forests. They are found in northeast part of USA, China, New Zealand, and they are also found in West Europe. They are their varieties are so many. They are oak, beech, ash, etc. And the common animals we can find here are deer, fox, wolf. Etc. Now let's move to temperate evergreen forests. They are found in the mid latitude in the coastal region. They are located among the eastern margin of the continents. They are found in East USA, South China, and Southeast Brazil. Some common trees found here are oak, pine, eucalyptus, etc. Now we will move towards coniferous forest. Coniferous forests can be found in 70 to 50 degree of latitude, and the trees are so good and they are softwood trees, they are long, tall and covered with snow. Their varieties are kedar and pine. The kedar and pine and their wood of these trees are so useful for making pearls, manufacturing paper, match boxes and packing boxes. The common animals we can find here are polar bear and mink and etc. Now let's move to the tropical grasses. They are found in tropical region. The grass that grows about to 3 to 4 meters tall in height. Some animals found here are elephant, giraffe, deer, leopards, etc. Now let's move to desert vegetation. The desert vegetation is very scarce due to less rainfall and scrooging heat. Some water bodies like this are found which are known as oases which are surrounded by many trees. Date palms and cactus are some common trees found here. Rattlesnakes, skimmers, and beetles are some common animals found here. Finally, this is a tropical evergreen forest. They are very thick and located close to the equator. Animals found here are elephants, lions, tigers, deers, etc. The thick canopies of closely spaced trees do not allow the sunlight to enter even, the, even in the daytime. This is a perennial river which flows here and gives water to plants and trees throughout the year. So I hope you like our forest too. So trees give us so many things. So it's our duty to save and to protect them. Save trees, save forest. Thank, Thank you. you. 
Hello everyone, I am Vedant and I am Ranveer. We study in class 7 Hanuman High School. We have prepared model of space station and explained little bit about it. So, a space station is also known as orbit station and orbital space station. So, the main function of it is to carry out humans in the orbit for an extended period of time. And the station must have docking parts to dock other spacecraft at to supply goods and other human crews or the other spacecraft to research and do their work. So now we will explain you about our space station. So here you can see different planets like Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars and Jupiter. And we have also here added the moon and the satellite also. So now I will tell different parts of our space station. So it is known as the integrated structure in which instructions send it from the ISS or internal uh, international space station which is on the earth is carried out on it it is known as the solar panels the main function the, of the solar panel is to convert solar energy into electronic energy and give it to the station to work it on it is known as the modulus the modulus is a space from where astronauts can do live and research about their uh, about their things without wearing their space suits it is known as the radiated panels the main function of radiated panel is to give up excessive heat which is stored inside the station. The mission of the International Space Station is to enable long-term exploration of space and provide benefit to people on Earth. So I hope you like our project of model of space station. Thank you. Hello everyone. Generally, we all have seen a lot of magic tricks. But some interesting magic tricks have scientific reasons behind them. When these reasons are unknown to the audience, it creates an illusion and amaze the audience. So, I am Vijay Vakari from class 7th A Hanuman High School, going to show you this type of science water magic tricks. As I love science to learn with activities, so I have chosen this topic of science water magical tricks. So now, let's get started. In my first experiment, I will use a jar, colored water, a plate, candle and a matchstick. So now let's start. So now I'll pour the colored water. And now while well, I'll keep the jar, so the water will start coming up. As the oxygen got depleted, so the candle blew off and there was no air pressure inside the jar and there was a lot of air pressure outside the jar. So the outside air pressure forced the water to rise up. So this way the water rised up and came. So now let's move on to our next experiment. So here I am with a colorful interesting magic trick. In this I will use oil, spoon, water, food color. So now I will mix little food color into oil and now I'll mix it well and now I'll add this mixture on the top of water as oil is less than than water so it will float on water and as food color is water based so Food color will leave the oil and go to the water. This looks so amazing. It looks like a tiny explosion or fireworks. I love this because it was very colorful. So I hope you enjoyed all the experiments and will try at your home. Thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Prem Gujar. And I am Suhani Lalani. We are from grade 6 Hanuman High School. We have prepared the working model of drip irrigation. Drip irrigation is the most inefficient water and nutrition delivery system for growing crops. It delivers water and nutrients directly to the plant's root zone in the right amount at the right time. So each plant gets exactly what it needs to grow optimally. So we will explain how it works. There is a tank and the pipe is connected through the tank and the pipe has small small hole. When I will open it, the water comes out through the tank and, and each plant gets the sufficient of the water.
I hope you like our experiment. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello friends, my name is Sona Mukani. I study in 7th B Hanuman High School. Today I am going to do science experiment for virtu science virtual fair. My topic is air exerts pressure. For this experiment, we need a plastic bottle, a straw and a glass, some balloons and some water. So first, we will put a hole in the bottle and place a straw in it. We will push the straw inside. Now, we will put a glass near the straw and fill the water with the bottle. So now we have filled the water in the bottle. Now we will blow the balloon and place it on the cap. Now we will put a we will put a glass here. So now we will I will leave the balloon and the water will come through the straw. So the water is coming out through the straw. So we saw that the air pressure pressurizes the water and the water needs to come out. So hope you like it. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone, myself Maitri from grade 8A. I have prepared a model of wastewater treatment plant where the treatment of wastewater involves physical, chemical and biological processes and treatment of water. Factories releases a lot of harmful chemicals and the dirty waste directly into the rivers which makes the river more polluted. The, this dirty water and the polluted water of the rivers is then sent to the wastewater treatment plant for the treatment of water. Water is allowed to pass through the bar screens where large impurities such as rags, tins, plastics, etc. are removed. Water is then sent to the grit and sand removal tank where the speed of incoming water is decreased and sand, grit and pebbles are allowed to settle down. From there, the waste is transferred into another tank where solids like faces are allowed to settle down and then it is removed with the help of a scraper. The sludge is then transferred to a larger tank where it is allowed to decompose by anaerobic bacteria. Air is pumped into the clarified water to help aerobic bacteria to grow. Bacteria consume human waste, food waste, soap and other unwanted material still remaining in the water. After several hours, suspected microbes are settled at the bottom and the clear water is removed from the top. And finally, the fully clarified water is transferred into a separate tank from where the fully clarified water is transferred to our homes. Thank you. Hi friends, today I am Nancy Wala from grade 7, Hanuman High School. Today as a part of a virtual fair, I am going to explain you how the kidney removes urine from our body. In our body, there is a special system known as excretory system. This system removes all the toxic substances from the blood and makes the blood pure. So this system is too much important for each and everyone. Look at my model. Here you can see two pin shaped structure known as kidneys. In this kidneys, the special structure is known as nephrons. Nephrons collect the best products from the blood and make the blood pure to reduce the to reduce the urine. Here you can see guys. Now this urine come out from each of these kidneys and temporarily store in the urinary bladder. Now urine store in urinary bladder through these ureters. Then when the urinary bladder will store maximum amount of urine then the special tube known as urethra will open. Once the tube will open, all the urine will go out from our body. So friends, I hope you like my video and my model also. So thank you and have a nice day. Good morning.
Hi everyone, my name is Yadil Akbar Jamani. I'm from class 6 Hanuman High School. I have made a project on series circuit working model for science virtual fair. An electric circuit. An electric circuit is a path for transmitting electric current. An electric circuit includes a device that gives energy to the charged particles constituting an electric, an electric current such as a battery or a generator. So here is my project. I have connected two circuits with the batteries so that my project can work. So when I will connect the first battery with its circuit, so the light inside the house will start glowing. And when I will connect, and when I will connect the second battery to its circuit, so my Windmill will start working. Thank you and have a nice day. Hello everyone, I am Vijay Vagani from class 7th A Hanuman High School. Today I am going to show you all about how our digestive system works. So now let's enjoy my experiment. Suppose this is our mouth. So we eat our food from the buccal cavity. Then it goes to the stomach with the help of esophagus. In stomach, there is enzymes which get mixed with the food. Then it moves to the small intestine. On the way, liver and pancreas secrete some juices which get mixed with the food. Then it reaches small intestine. In small intestine, there are some finger like structures called villi which are covered by the blood vessels. So the food which is digested goes to the villi and through that it goes to blood vessels and then to all the parts of the body. Then the unused food is then taken to large intestine. In large intestine, it reabsorbs salt and water from the unused food and the unused food goes to the rectum. After a particular time interval, the muscular opening called anus opens and the unused food goes out from our body. So I hope that you enjoyed and liked about how our digestive system works. Thank you. Hello everyone, I am Alvira. I am from grade 6, Hanuman High School. Today I have prepared a working model which is types of motion. So as you all know, there are three types of motions. Rectilinear motion, circular motion and periodic motion. So first is the rectilinear motion. So when I will move my car like this in a straight manner, it will move like this. And so it is called a rectilinear motion. Next is the swing. So when I will apply force on the swing, it will move in a periodic time of manner. So it is called a periodic motion. Here it is the circular. So here I am applying the force. It will move in a circular manner. So it is called a circular motion. I hope you like my model. Thank you. Hello, my name is Rudradu. My name is Mandi. And my name is Neem. We are 9 standard students from Hanumath High School. We are here to explain you about how your pressure gives cooling effect with the help of our desert cooler model. So basically, your pressure is the surface phenomenon. Uh, your pressure is the natural phenomenon. It takes heat energy and wind speed from atmosphere. The rate of your pressure uh, the rate of evaporation increases with the increase in the wind speed and temperature and it produces cooling effect. So here is our model. Uh, as we start the switch, uh, as we start the switch, uh, fan start rotating and it produces heat energy and gives the it increases the temperature and wind speed. Yeah, it's cool. So, so here evaporation takes place and it gives the cooling effect. And this principle also works in our uh, home, uh, in our home refrigerators and AC or air conditioner. Thank you. Yes, my name is Anish Lopard and Nirbhay Hadia. We study in grade 8 of Hanuman High School and uh, today we have made an experiment. Uh, this experiment is done under guidance of my science teacher Ms. Gopika Ma'am. Here we will show you some tricks of fire. The lowest temperature at which a substance catches fire is, is known as its ignition temperature. So let's start. Here for my first activity, I have taken a candle. Here for my first activity, I have taken a candle and I will burn it simply. Uh, then I will put this uh, uh, this glass on it.
see here what you observe the candle flickers off in just a few seconds uh, it is it happens because oxygen is needed for burning when we put glass on it the oxygen supply is cut and so candle flickers off for second activity i have taken a candle and a metal rod which is rolled with paper now we will heat the paper with the help of a candle what do you observe the paper will not burn it happens because the heat which we are giving to the paper is transferred to the metal rod for my third activity i have taken a candle and uh, put it in the glass jar then i will burn the candle now i will pour water in it i will burn candle see the candle is burning it is not flicker of water is not touch till the top now i will put in you know. so here you can see the water is not uh, then also the candle flicker up it reason is because uh, when we put you know in water it will react with water and co2 uh, then carbon dioxide gas is released and we know that carbon dioxide is an extinguisher that's why in our school cylinders are filled with uh, carbon dioxide gas for fourth activity i have taken three paper cups of same size now the first paper cup is sprayed with sanitizer the second paper cup is filled with water and the third paper cup is empty Now we'll first try this with the sanitizer spray cup. What do you see? Here? The paper cups burns suddenly. Now we'll try this with a empty cup. As you can see, the cup is not burning because the ignition temperature of metal is very high. Thank you. Thank you. students of grade 9th from hanuman high school today we are going to show you some experiment related to buoyancy myself riva myself yashvi myself darshit myself mohit have you ever heard about the word buoyancy buoyancy means the force exerted by on a fluid it helps an object to float or sink in water so now let's see on the experiment we will look uh, let's see the magic of this buoyancy force this, this is, is spring balance as we can see the weight of this is nearly to 60 to 70 now we will dip it inside normal water and now we can see that the weight is nearly to 40 grams so now we will uh, we will show you the density difference so this is a beaker we will pour some vegetable oil in it and now we will add some water in it now let's stir it let it stable now as we can see the first layer is of water and second is of oil oil floats on water because of higher density do you know that buoyancy is directly proportional to density that means the density is increased and buoyancy for we will be also increased now we will show you the experiment on egg of the uh, buoyancy force 
Now this both are the beakers. This beaker consists of simple water, and this beaker consists of water with soil. Now uh, he is going to dip uh, dip the egg in both of the beakers. As now we can see that both of them are eggs and both of them are in water. But why one is sinking and one is floating? Yes, because of uh, this water consists of salt solution. Salt, salt has higher density, so egg will float on water. Now let's look at another experiment of clay. This is normal water. Uh, we will. This is Archimedes' principle. Archimedes was a scientist who uh, who did detail on buoyancy. This is one clay ball. We will dip it inside the water and it will sink. This is another clay which has same mark but shape is different. As we can see, this is floating. This is because buoyancy exists more force, so egg is uh, so clay is floating. Now we will see an experiment like this only uh, with orange. Now he is going to put the orange in this water. It is an uh, it is the unpeeled orange. Unpeeled orange has has air uh, air species uh, inside it, so it will float on water. And now uh, we will uh, unpeel the orange. We will put it inside the water. Thank you. Thank you. As innovation savas, when people believe in their own idea, we, uh, the students of grade eight, we prepared a group project in social science on the working model of EVM. The members are myself, Avni Haryani, myself, Devangadeya, Aish Valia, Ali Mandi Bukhari, myself, Devkanagar. Now I would like to invite Dev Kanaba to tell the importance of the EVM. India is the world's biggest democratic country to conduct free and fair election. Electronic voting machine, which is more known as EVM, was designed by the ECIL Electronic Corporation of India Limited. was designed in 1977 and it was assigned by the election commissions. It was first demonstrated on 18th August. 6th August 1982 and it was then uh, first used in the general elections of Kerala in May 1982. Now Devang would like to tell the advantages of EVM. First, EVM reduced the time in casting votes. It reduced the time taken to count votes and declare election result. Third, it also saved paper. Fourth, vote can be stored up to 10 years. Fifth, the machine will register only the first, first button pressed. So this is how EVM works. Thank you. Have a nice day. Hi, my name is Manthan. My name is John Ali. We are from Hanuman High School. Today we are going to explain a model of solar cell. You probably know that plants get their energy from sun through their, pro uh, through their uh, process called photosynthesis. We humans don't have our own leaves, but we can get energy from sun in a different way like electrical energy. But here comes a question, does you have any electrical leaf? Yes, solar cell. A solar cell gathers energy from sun and generates electricity. Let us find out how. The sun emits light in form of waves and this wave come, can be arranged in a length. So when the sun is shining, this wave come, come and hit on the surface of solar cell. 
The active part of the solar cell is wafer made of wafer made of semiconductive material typically silicon. The silicon is uh, the semiconductor is a type of material that normally does not conduct electricity well, but it can be made more conductive in a certain conditions. The top layer is also called negative type or N type as it uh, favors the work of collection and transport of electrons. The top, the bottom thin layer it contains silicon and uh, elements such as boron, which has fewer electrons as compared to silicon. Uh, solar cell can produce electricity only during the day, but storing electricity efficiency during the night is a big challenge. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Husha Bariya. And I am Suhani Bariani. I am Khushi Chauhan from Hanuman High School. Today our topic for science fair is production of sound. How do we come to know that the lecture is over in school? We come to know easily by hearing sound of the bell, right? Sound is produced by many ways as vibration of strings, vibration of membrane and vibration of vocal cords in human beings, etc. So now, as you can see, we have taken 4 to 5 rubber bands, a tissue box and 2 pencils. When we pluck the rubber bands, it produces sound. We will not hear the sound. As soon as the rubber band stops vibrating, due to different levels of, due to different rubber bands, thickness of the rubber bands. So as we have, so as we have here the rubber bands, due to thickness of the rubber bands, the sound will differ from each other. As you can see, we have taken four glasses filled with water. As you can see, we have four glasses filled with water at different levels. We will strike them gently, which are filled with water at increasing level. We will strike them gently. Now we will strike them in succession. We hear decent sounds. The sound which are produced are produced by the vibration and different levels of water. So as we can see here we have we have taken some tuning forks and bowl wrapped with balloon having grains on them. When we when we hit a tuning fork, when we hit a tuning fork and bring them near the bowl, the grains start vibrating. They vibrate due to different they vibrate due to different They vibrate due to different intensity in the tuning forks. The tuning for the energy present in the fork transfers to the bowl and makes the green vibrate. So here we end up with our activity production of sound. Thank you. Hello friends, my name is Ishani Trivedi with my friend Stuti Doshi. Today we are going to present volcano eruption experiment. Volcano eruptions occur when molten rock called magma rises up to the surface of the mountain. Sometimes it can be quite calm or may be harmful. So let us begin with our experiment. Let us assume this mountain as volcanic mountain. For our experiment we have used thumbs up, mentos and inu. Fill the half mountain with thumbs up. Add 5 to 6 mentos to it. Wait for a few minutes so that our ingredient reaction take place. Once when you start, uh, once when you start hearing the hissing sound of the bubbles, add inu to it. 